Good morning. It's Thursday, February the 17th, and uh, I'm glad you're joining in on our weekly devotions. And we've been talking about over the month of January and over the month of February to Jesus calls his followers to go and do likewise, to love, to have compassion, to show mercy. Uh, Jesus says, if I've been sent, so I'm sending you out into the world to do these things. And so as we begin today, we're going to be looking at Psalms and John and Matthew, uh, the scripture we'll be looking at, so I hope you have your Bibles. And I hope you had a blessed week uh, as the Lord watches over you and keeps you. Um, and so let's go to him in prayer uh, as we begin today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence uh, without fear, without shame, because of your love and your compassion and your mercy toward us. I pray that people that watch this video would uh, experience your love and compassion and mercy toward them. I pray that they would seek out uh, fellow, <laughs> fellow believers uh, that they would seek out people who can help them understand and know you, uh, that they would seek out uh, a body of Christ that they can be a part of to worship together, to uh, serve together. Father, that those who need to be might be saved from their sins and drawn close to you. Bless this time that we have. Use your word for your honor and glory. And may you be lifted up and may we be blessed by the reading of your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> We've talked about Jesus, the one who calls us to go and do likewise, that he is the absolute truth of God. That this Jesus is the special love of God toward us. Jesus says that he came to reveal the Father. Uh, he came to do the Father's will. And so he makes a lot of claims about himself. So we're looking at who this Jesus really is. And today I want you to think about Jesus is a brilliant light. You know, he tells us in Revelation that there'll be no need of a sun or moon or stars to light our lives because the light of, of the Lord will light all of heaven and what a brilliant light that will be we don't understand it all the Bible tells us that there are secrets that God keeps to himself and doesn't share with us uh, sometimes it's a need to know thing you know we don't need to know the answer to a question therefore uh, he doesn't share it with us the book of Job shares that Job never got his answers from God. God just said, you just have to trust me. And uh, so sometimes we just have to be satisfied with trust in the Lord and, and knowing that he is benevolent. He is good and kind and gentle. He's loving and merciful and that uh, that is enough for us. Uh, in scripture, some of the prophets say that they had visions and that God told them, don't write these things down. It's not time for this to be known about. He, they were shown for some reason, but we weren't. And we just have to trust God that, you know, things will work out according to his will as they always have. So a brilliant light, getting back to that, you know, the word of God is light. In Psalm 119, verse 105, we read as, as this 119 is all about God's word and his laws and his commandments and his statutes. And it says, thy word, God's word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Um, it's like a, a flashlight if you want to look at it that way, if that helps you. Or uh, you have a light on your cell phone maybe that you can turn on. And when it's dark all around us and we shine a light out, uh, God shares that that's what his word is like. Uh, David saw it as a light to his path. Uh, when we can't see where we're going and we shine out a light, it does a lot of different things for us. 
Uh, it, it reveals what's in front of us. Uh, and God's Word does that. It reveals things like, when is Jesus coming back? Well, we don't know a date and time, but we can see the things happening that are talked about in Scripture happening in our day. So some of us, like myself, believe that Jesus is coming back soon. Uh, and it's, it's a glorious, optimistic thing to think about it. Um, so it reveals what lies in, in front of us. Uh, it gives us clarity. We're able to see better. You know, when it's dark, you see maybe shapes and, and all I can remember as a child. Uh, waking up at night and looking around and it was dark and I would think I'd see something and see something move and it was kind of scary at times but when the light shines on there's there's clarity in all that's around me so we begin to see things through God's eyes we begin to understand his ways and his thoughts and his promises so we begin to understand things. So things aren't as confusing. It all comes into focus that God is doing what he said. But not only does it give us clarity and it reveals things, but it gives us assurance. There's a sense of security of being in the light. Uh, some people lose their sight and there's fears tied to that and I can understand it. Uh, I here at the church, I go up and down the stairs sometimes without turning the lights on, and I, I feel my way uh, just to get the sense of what it's like without sight. And it can be a scary thing, especially when you happen to stumble and you don't know where you're falling or what's in front of you. So it gives us assurance and hope. Uh, we're, we're more secure and we're more bold when the light is on. But it also not only does all that, but it guides us. We can see clearly, we have assurance, the path is lit up before us, and we can see the path by the light that we're supposed to go. I can see whenever I turn on the lights and the stairwells, I can see exactly every step and where I'm going. Well, God's Word does all these things for us. Uh, we have assurance in Jesus as we read scripture. Our faith grows and abounds. Uh, we're guided. We know, uh, we know sin when we, when we sense it. We know temptation when we sense it. We know right and wrong because we have the absolute truth. Uh, we know the love of God. Uh, we know the mind of God. Uh, and so we have this guidance for us through scripture. So the Word of God is a light that lights our way, okay? Then in John chapter 8, verse 12, it says that uh, Jesus says, Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus says, I'm this light. Now in John chapter 1, we're told that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, uh, that, that the Word created everything. And then it's, it talks about the Word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. It's talking about Jesus. So Jesus is, this, is the, uh, this, the Word of God. We have the written Word, and we have the Spirit of the Word, which is Jesus. And so he says, I am the light of the world. He tells his disciples, they said, we want to see the Father. And he tells them, if you've seen me, you've seen him. He is light, I'm light. I reveal darkness all around me. You know, when light comes into a dark room, it dispels the darkness. And so Jesus dispels darkness. He guides us. He gives us clarity. He reveals to us. Uh, and he gives us assurances by being in his light. The fear is gone. The hope is restored. And so Jesus does these things. If you ever think about it, when Jesus walked in a room, people either ran up to him and loved him, drawn to the light, or they threw rocks because their hearts were revealed. And they were angry because they knew that Jesus knew the depths of their hearts. 
And so Jesus says, I am the light. I'm going to show you the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. You can't get to, to God in darkness. You have to have the light to show you the way so that you can walk the narrow path. You can obey him and follow him uh, and, and live the life that he wants you to. That's what, why we need to believe in Jesus. He says, I am this light. Okay? He says in John 1, 12, I like this verse. It says, but to as many as received him, Jesus, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed in his name. So we, when we hear about Jesus and we see Christians, when people see me or if you're a Christian, when they see you, they have a decision to make. Do I believe this or do I not believe it? Do we believe in the light or do we remain in darkness? The, the scriptures around this verse talk about that Jesus came into his own and they didn't receive him because they desired the darkness more than the light. So there's a choice to be made. If you're listening to me today, you have a choice to believe what I'm saying, that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And you have a choice to, to decide, do you believe in Jesus? You see, we are all separated from our Creator God who is holy and just and righteous and must punish sin. Sin is disbelieving Him. That's what Adam and Eve did in the garden. They didn't believe what He said. They believed what Satan said. And that disbelief led to disobedience. And we have that nature in us. We have a tendency not to believe what we're told, especially what God tells us. We're the ones that want to pick up rocks and throw them. How dare God be so judgmental and narrow-minded? No, He is God. He created us. And He's revealing Himself to us in love and mercy. That's why Jesus came. He says, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save the world. He came to sacrifice His life and shed His blood, taking upon Himself your sin and my sin, that we might be forgiven, that we might not be punished for our sins because God will judge and punish sins. So God has provided out of love and mercy Jesus Christ to take our sins away so that we can, if we believe it, we can be, like it says here, become the sons of God because our sins are forgiven. We become justified before God. We become reconciled to God we become righteous like Jesus. That's the choice that I had to make when I was in 11th grade in high school many years ago. And if you're listening to me today, that's the choice you have to make today. Do I believe in Jesus Christ as the only Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me that I might have my sins forgiven, that I might become a Son of God, not just a creation of God, but a son of God, and that I might live with him forever in heaven. Jesus says that if you receive him and believe him today, he'll come into your life, and he does that through his spirit that he sends to us. You see, each person that has put their faith and trust in Jesus and believes it, the Holy Spirit is given to them to come and dwell in them that they might be changed into the likeness of Jesus. That the Holy Spirit causes us to repent and, and remove the uh, sin from our lives, the bad habits from our lives, the evil from our lives. And he replaces it with the character and nature of the God that created us. That's the Holy Spirit's work. So the question that we have here today, you know, believing the light, do you believe? And that's an eternal question because it determines whether you're going to be able to live with your Creator or be separated from Him for eternity. Whether you have a place in heaven that Jesus is preparing by receiving Jesus or whether by rejecting Him you have a place separated from Him, a place in what God says is a place of torment. What that torment is, we're not sure, but I sure don't want to find out. 
Then in Matthew chapter 5, the last passage we're going to look at, in verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you, that's the spirit of light of God coming to dwell in you. And he says, You are the light of the world. Not only is there a believing in the light, but there is a being of the light. I've had instances in my life where I've just walked in a room and people walked up and said, you're a Christian, aren't you? Yeah, how did you know? There was just something about you. I don't see it. I know myself. But apparently, the Holy Spirit, there are times when he shines out so well in my life that other people notice without a word being said. Just like when Jesus entered a room, he didn't have to say anything. It was just his presence. And if a born-again believer who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit is walking in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, all they have to do is walk in a room and the light of Jesus shines out into the darkness. He says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's what we're supposed to live for. That's what we're supposed to go and do likewise. Everywhere we go, we go in the Spirit, full of the Spirit, humbly, that our lights might shine and that God might get the glory of it. That people would notice a difference. I remember one time years ago after I became a Christian, I didn't know anything about living the Christian life. I just knew I was saved. And as a teenager, I was sitting on the back pew of our church quietly before the Sunday evening service, just sitting there. And a, another teenager, a young girl, came up and she sat down beside me and she said, I was going to run away from home tonight. My bags are packed. I hate it at home. But when I saw you and how calm you are and how peaceful you are, the poor girl didn't know what was going on in my heart and mind. I was struggling with something. That's why I was sitting quietly on the back pew talking to the Lord. And she said, you're so peaceful and quiet. If God can do that for you, he can do it for me. And I'm going to go home and give it another try. I was minding my own business. But God was using me, minding my own business in the spirit that I didn't know anything about to touch someone's life who was watching. If you're a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, people are watching. Some are watching to trip you up and test you. Some are watching just to see the reality of it. And, and people want to see the reality of Jesus. We talk about it all the time, but they want to see it and they want to hear it off of our lips. Is that the life you're living? If not, you need to humble yourself before God, ask Him to forgive you, and, and to ask the Holy Spirit to so, excuse me, so shine through you that others would see Jesus in you. It's not something we sing about, and it's not something we talk about. It's something we live. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, you can have the same life, and you can glorify your Creator by believing in Jesus. You see, the Word is light. Jesus is light. We have to believe the light, and we become the light. And it's only through Jesus. My hope and prayer for you today is that you seek Him, because He says, if you seek me with all your heart, you will be found. He said, you will find me. And you have a decision to make. I pray you make the decision to believe in Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray for those who hear today that the ones who are not yet believing in Jesus, that they would prayerfully seek and read Scripture and talk to Christians to find their way to the light, out of darkness, into the light. I pray for those who are believers in Jesus Christ, who've been born again, that they would let their light shine so that you get honor and glory out of it. Bless us today, Father, with the decisions we make for Jesus. For it's in his name I pray. Amen. Be blessed today.